Hello everyone, today I'm going to be presenting on the P.T. Barnum era. Um, I have my information from Chapter 3 of the Advertising and Integrated Brand Promotion book. So some background information is that this era was from 1875 to 1918. And even though there was advertising before this era, it wasn't until America was becoming an urban industrialized nation that advertising really became a vital part. So advertising was part of the consumer culture during this time, which was basically a way of life centered around consumption, and advertising became a full-fledged industry during this era. So some advertising legends that the, this chapter mentions are Albert Lasker, Francis W. Ayer, um, Johnny Powers, and many more. And basically these were all people who owned newspaper companies, copyright companies, um, and they helped form advertising into what it is today. So these are founders, visionaries, and artists who played important roles in the establishment of advertising of the advertising business. And several founders of the industry had fathers who shared the same occupation, which was being a minister. So because of this, these people grew up being exposed to public speaking and passionate selling of ideas and adapted and they adapted those into the modern advertising. Um, that they did during this time so they helped shape city life science progress and public consumption um advertising was motivated by the need to sell vastly increased supply of goods um, brought on by mass production and the demands of an increasingly urban population seeking social identity through branded products among other things so advertising during this time made unmarked commodities into social symbols and identity markers so this allowed marketers to charge more for their products because if they were like an actual brand, people would pay more for them because consumers were willing to pay more money for brands than for unmarked commodities, even if the products were literally identical. So this is an ad um, for R.W. Bell & Co.'s Pure Soaps. So people were more likely to buy these soaps because it's from an actual brand than soaps that were just unmarked com commodities, even if they were very similar. So advertising was unregulated in the U.S. until 1906 when Congress passed the Pure Food and Drug Act. So this required manufacturers to list the active ingredients of their project of their products on their labels. Um, so basically before that, um, advertisements didn't have to list or just the products. They didn't have to like list what was in them um, on the product. And they could just make up lies about what was in them like in their advertisements. So as you can see on the right, we have cocaine toothache drops. And it says like in instantaneous cure and then on the top we have a label that we see on a lot of things like nutritional facts of how much of what is um in there so the bottom picture obviously is being exaggerated and lied and they can just lie about like whatever's in the product and they can lie in the advertisements but now we've um products have to list like what's in there so pt barnum was a famous showman and circus entrepreneur he um, owned the Barnum and Bailey Circus. So his ads were bold and lively and had more copy and little color, little photography and lots of exaggerations and lies. So as you can see the um, pictures on the left, there's a lot going on. Um, they're very bold and there are a lot of words, but during this time ads tried to use less words because there were a lot of people immigrating to the US and there were a lot of kids who um, or children who were working instead of going to school. So a lot of people didn't know how to read, so they needed all these pictures um, to show what the ad was for. So why were ads like this? These ads existed in a period of rapid urbanization, massive immigration, labor unrest, and significant concerns about the abuses of capitalism. So because of this, these ads were able to become deceptive and misleading. Um, the world changed rapidly in this period because of the suffrage movement, the progressive movement, silent motion pictures, mass culture, and a lot of these offered um, stress. So the ads wanted to offer solutions to the stresses of modern life, no matter how real or imagined it was. And if World War I didn't happen, advertising regulations might have happened earlier. However, um, during World War I, a lot of ads were used for government policy and action. So you have two pictures about um, a patriotic advertising but if World War One didn't happen, there might have been more regulations sooner. So thank you. That was my presentation.